What's up everybody, my name is Walter Hinchman. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Wolverine. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to prevent lactic acid buildup in your muscles. So lactic acid is a byproduct of strenuous exercise. Your muscles are always naturally producing lactate. However, when you're training, hitting a higher number of reps, pushing through cows on the assault bike, your body produces lactate at a much faster rate than it can be removed, which is otherwise known as lactate threshold or the upper limit of exercise capacity. Too much lactate in your blood produces a burning sensation, which falls with a loss of power. So this can be extremely problem, problematic, right, for athletes, since the person who can hold off lactic acid the longest is going to do better, have better performance, and produce more workload. So we're gonna talk about the process by which lactic acid is generated, how to delay that muscle fatigue by counteracting and preventing the development of lactic acid. So what does lactic acid and how does lactic acid build up your muscles? As your heart rate begins to rise, your breathing will become heavier and faster, shuttling more oxygen into your muscles. Your body generates energy while performing aerobic exercise or exercise with oxygen. Some exercise modalities, however, such as repeatedly lifting heavy things off the ground, right, requires more energy production faster than your body can adequately deliver oxygen. As this takes place, your body starts to produce energy anaerobically or without oxygen, generating energy from glucose from the carbohydrates you consume in your diet through a process called glycolysis. Glucose is broken down or metabolized into a substance called pyruvate through a series of biological reactions. If your body has a sufficient amount of oxygen, pyruvate is shuttled into an aerobic pathway to create more energy. However, if your oxygen supply is limited, pyruvate is converted into a substance called lactate, producing more energy through the breakdown of glucose. High lactate levels increase muscle acidity and disrupt other metabolites. The same metabolic pathways which facilitate the breakdown of glucose to energy performs poorly in this acidic environment. Your body produces lactate as a natural defense mechanism to prevent permanent damage from extreme exertion from slowing down biological systems to maintain muscle contraction. Too much lactate in the bloodstream creates a burning sensation in the muscle resulting in a loss of power as you meet what's known as your lactic acid threshold. When your body slows down, oxygen becomes more readily available while lactate reverts back to pyruvate allowing continued aerobic metabolism and energy production for the body to ad adequately recover from exercise. So when you have lactic acid buildup, will that cause muscle soreness? Lactic acid, okay, is not responsible for increased perceived muscle soreness post-workout. Lactate production, other metabolites during strenuous exercise results in the burning sensation in those muscles, yet through which, through this, uh, how these metabolites happen, it still remains unclear, right? The mechanism is not completely known. Research has little association with delayed onset muscle fatigue or DOMS and lactic acid levels. So we don't know a whole lot about how that's created. The exact cause of DOMS, right, even though it's, it still remains unknown, there is a lot of research out there that is saying that the muscle damage created in tissues surrounding those muscle cells is what's creating that delayed onset muscle fatigue. So the response to strenuous exercise and overexertion will, res will result in an inflammatory response leading to muscle pain and damage depending upon the severity of the damage, right? Or how hard you work out. Anti-inflammatory agents such as um, turmeric, right? Can be used in response to help reduce that swelling and inflammation post-workout. So something, right? Five-time fittest man on earth, Matt Fraser said, right? Is that whoever can hold off lactic acid the longest is going to outperform their competition. All right, so how do you prevent that lactic acid buildup in your muscles? So we're reverberating Matt Fraser's words, right? Whoever can hold off that lactic acid the longest is gonna outperform their competition, right? So high intensity endurance training, endurance training requires long bouts of prolonged exercise performance, which is gonna result in that lactate accumulation causing muscle fatigue and that loss of power. CrossFit or high intensity functional training, for example, it involves a series of constantly varied movements at high volumes, often involving several consecutive exercises and Olympic lifts with little to no rest intervals, either for time or as many reps as possible. So triathletes also deal with lactic acid accumulation, heart rate, VO2, and VO2 max, where it's gonna play a critical role in performance during long exercise bouts, such as cycling, swimming, or running. 
So the biggest difference is that in resistance training and lifting heavier loads or heavier weights for high volumes will increase lactic acid, right? At a much faster rate than those other modalities. So there are a few ways in which you can effectively reduce lactic acid buildup, increasing your lactic acid threshold and delaying that muscle fatigue and loss of power, all right? Things such as adequate hydration, breathing techniques, right? So you're getting that oxygen uh, and specific supplements that can help you with reducing that and buffering that lactic acid uh, threshold. So what supplements are best to prevent lactic acid buildup? Again, reverberating Matt Frazier's words, beta alanine, okay? Beta alanine is a naturally occurring or non-essential beta amino acid, specifically classified, right, as that beta amino acid, which means that it's different in a molecular structure as compared to a normal amino acid. So it's produced naturally in the liver, can be obtained through dietary sources such as chicken, meat, and fish, all right? What beta alanine is going to do is it's going to synthesize um, what's called muscle carnosine or that muscle carnosine concentration in the body, which is a natural lactic acid buffer, buffer which is going to delay the onset of muscle fatigue. It's going to um, delay the loss of power and increase time to failure or increase time to exhaustion. So when you work out, your body, like we covered earlier, relies on glucose for energy, which is going to result in that lactic acid or muscle acidity. Lactic acid is created from those buildup of hydrogen ions, which causes your muscle's pH to drop. Therefore, when lactic acid rises, it linearly increases the acidity in your muscle tissue. When acidity increases, your muscle, uh, muscles lose the ability to contract and results in loss of endurance and loss of power. Beta alanine, all right, specifically the patent ingredient carnosine buffers hydrogen through an increase in that carnosine content in your muscle tissue, which is going to help your muscles contract for a longer period of time and delay the onset of muscle fatigue and lactic acid uh, threshold is going to increase. So there's been numerous studies that say supplementing with beta alanine is going to improve your muscle carnosine concentrations. It's going to help you with the performance. Um, specifically, one study published in the Journal of Medical and Science in Sports and Exercise examined the effects of mus muscle carnosine concentration and endurance capacity or cycling capacity after 24 weeks of supplementation in cyclists. The studies show that supplementing with carnosine beta alanine increased muscle carnosine content, content and improved cycling, uh, high intensity cycling capacity at every single time interval in that study. The second best supplement that you're gonna use, right, for endurance training or for preventing that lactic acid buildup is actually gonna be what's called coenzyme Q10, otherwise known as CoQ10. CoQ10 is a fat-soluble vitamin-like molecule which serves, a potent anti, or serves as a potent antioxidant and facilitates the biological process of generating more adenosine triphosphate. ATP is gonna allow every single human cellular action in your body um, to have more energy when it's performed. Studies have shown that CoQ10 is one of the best vitamins for endurance since it has a direct effect on muscle ergogenics. CoQ10 works to increase cellular efficiency, therefore it enables your body to generate more ATP, helping you produce more power, reducing lactic acid, and enhancing your athletic performance. Um, in one randomized controlled, uh, placebo-controlled study, right, published in the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition at Baylor University, there were 41 participants, right, 22 aerobically trained and 19 untrained in the study, between the ages of 26 and 33, which were administered 100 milligrams of CoQ10 twice per day for 14 days. The results showed that CoQ10 supplementation increased maximum oxygen consumption, increasing time to exhaustion, delaying muscle fatigue, since it's inhibited, uh, an inhibited lactic acid buildup and increased oxygen metabolism. The third best supplement that we're gonna be used, right, or that's used for the prevention of lactic acid buildup is citrulline malate. When it comes to um, you know, performance out outcomes and measurements, citrulline malate really does check all the boxes. Citrulline malate is a powerful combination of two ingredients, L-citrulline and malic acid. Um, through that unique mixture, citrulline malate has proven and to uh, elicit a very positive performance outcomes in power, strength, endurance, and recovery through several different mechanisms, right? Studies show that through these different mechanisms, citrulline malate can help you prevent lactic acid buildup. However, the available evidence concluding that citrulline malate works specifically to reduce uh, blood lactate is a little bit mixed, right? One study found that it, uh, citrulline malate reduced lactic acid buildup by 15% or 50% um, in the blood lactate uh, threshold. So a system, uh, systematic review, however, published in the Journal of Health and Science investigating the effects of citrulline on post-exercise uh, rating of perceived exertion, muscle soreness, and blood lactate levels conclude that citrulline malate significantly reduced post-workout uh, muscle soreness without affecting blood lactate levels. Therefore, a little bit more research is definitely needed, 
Um, bigger randomized control studies are needed to find out if citrulline malate is really going to help you reduce those lactic acid uh, threshold and build up um, your tolerance. So takeaway here, guys, right? Lactic acid is a natural byproduct of your training, right? But if you can increase time to exhaustion by adequately reducing lactic acid buildup, you'll unequivocally improve exercise performance and go harder, more workout volume, and better performance. So reduced lactic acid will result in higher rep volume, improved workout duration, increased strength, more hypertrophy, faster times, and improved peak power. Sufficient hydration, however, throughout the day, in addition to your sports performance supplements, can definitely help you prevent lactic acid buildup in your muscles and help you push the bounds of your training capacity. So subscribe to this YouTube channel here. If you guys have any other questions about nutrition, supplements, health, wellness, whatever it may be, go to swolverine.com and visit the blog. And until next time, 